welcome back to the class we are uh, uh, discussing structuralist understanding of indian society and in the previous class we started discussing uh, this very important uh, sociologist by name louis dumont and his uh, monumental work uh, homo hierarchicus so before this this particular class i hope you remember we had a discussion on structuralism as a very uh, influential theoretical framework emerged in linguistics but later found uh, salience in other social uh, science disciplines especially in uh, social anthropology so dumont really represents that tradition of french structuralism when he came to uh, study of indian uh, society so in the previous class we had a discussion about uh, this uh, you know the, the basic premises of uh, uh, homo hierarchicus and why that uh, he believed that this book um, is a uh, kind of an argument uh, to to take the perspectives of the local people more seriously so he's talking about the view from within and from without and he also argued that quite a lot of existing theoretical perspectives are eurocentric and ethnocentric and uh, that uh, does not provide adequate weightage to the perceptions of the local people so basically he wanted to correct uh, all these kind of uh, deficiencies or issues that he identified the way in which in his society had been studied and they also we also came uh, to the discussion that um, many of the things that are taken for granted in european societies like egalitarianism or 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 individualism and individual rights and other things need not be true in in many other parts so he uh, in his first uh, chapter introductory chapter he is actually uh, making a, a an an appeal to the french people uh, to be receptive to ideologically to intellectually understand other values so that you will better begin to uh, understand their own values so i think we were discussing this particular slide in the previous class the ideas which they people express are related to each other by more fundamental ideas even though they are unexpressed and fundamental ideas literally go without saying and have no need to be distinct that is tradition only their corollaries are explicit the caste system of for example appears as a perfectly coherent theory once one adds the necessary but implicit links to the principles that the people themselves give so this is the this was the last uh, slide that we discussed uh, in the previous class where he argues that the task of the Uh, anthropologist task of task of the sociologist is to understand the most fundamental uh, principle what he understood understood what he argued as a kind of a structuralist the structural principles which uh, are beyond human perceptions which are beyond the the uh, you know human uh, empirical uh, you know capacities capabilities uh, so so they need to be studied differently now uh, he uh, following bogle uh, one of the french masters uh he chooses the hindu notion of the fundamental opposition between pure and impure as his starting point for an understanding of caste system now this is an important point that bogle another french uh, anthropologist or sociologist had already uh, you know provided a very uh, fascinating very insightful understanding of uh, caste system and uh, you know bodio was 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 very closely followed bogle and uh, bogle had argued that one of the fundamental uh, you know notions uh, within hinduism is a kind of a opposition between the pure and the impure okay so please keep these two terms in mind uh, they argued that the opposition between pure and impure okay so this this binary and we in the in the previous class we mentioned that how these binaries are important in the structuralist uh, uh, you know scheme of things uh, binary way of presenting things binary way of understanding things is is something very central to the the structuralist argument so he followed bogle who argued that the most fundamental structural uh, base of hindu uh, philosophy of hindu social life is the opposition between the pure and the impure bogle had defined caste system as comprising of hierarchically arranged hereditary groups separated from each other in certain respects that is caste endogamy restriction on eating together and on physical contact but interdependent on others traditional division of labor now this is a very coherent division of uh, uh, sorry definition of caste system bogle had defined caste system as comprising of hierarchically arranged hereditary groups okay so these uh, uh, groups are arranged hierarchically and as we know hierarchy means the classification of social groups into superior and inferior it's not a vertical uh, sorry it's not a horizontal arrangement of things uh, on the basis of certain other attributes but it is a vertical it's a hierarchical uh, uh, arrangement of uh, groups with notions of uh, uh, superiority and inferiority and they are all 
hereditary groups you need to you are born into a particular group and your offsprings are born into that particular group and uh, so there is there is a there is a clear hereditary line that passes through the generations of people and it's a hereditary group separated from each other in certain respects so there is something that actually separate this one particular group from the other and uh, one important thing that or the most fundamental thing that actually uh, maintains this separation is a rule on caste endogamy okay caste endogamy endogamy is the 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 the, the, the rule that one has to get married within one's own group so this group can vary it can be uh, a caste endogamy it can be sub caste endogamy it can be you know religious endogamy ethnic endogamy so endogamy it only tells you that one has to get married within the group and this group can be defined uh, in in different ways so there are certain ways in which these groups are kept separate okay and as i mentioned one of the fundamental rules is the rule of endogamy and then restrictions on social uh, on eating together or physical contact that they these two groups are not allowed to have physical or social uh, or or civic social interactions but they are interdependent on other things okay but each of these castes uh, is dependent on other for their basic survival and 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 that is how you know um, a, a a a structural functionalist uh, explanation or a functionalist explanation of caste system would function uh, it's an arrangement of uh, of 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 castes in in different groups with a hierarchical arrangement and uh, you know certain caste perform certain function and for example the brahmins function as the priests or teachers or uh, say the the agriculturalist they are the people who cultivate in the land and there are weavers and there are potters there are oilmen there are you know washermen there are barbers and there are you know people at the lowest rank who remove the dead bodies of you know animals or who clean the villages who you know do the most menial jobs so each of these groups each of these jobs are hereditarily assigned hereditarily uh, you know determined so that there is a kind of a complementarity with, with each other okay the the washerman washes the the clothes of the uh, upper caste people who in turn provide them with the food grains and other things so so that is seen as a very uh, you know uh, very very coherent functional system this is how uh, many times a uh, caste was you know ex explained and even justified by functionalist groups so bogle uh, kind of defined it in in that sense dumo stresses the importance of recognizing these three features or principles as mutually entitled resting on one fundamental conception for the atomization into simple elements is the students need and not a characteristic of the system in itself what we need in order to understand the distinctions we make is a singular true principle such a principle dumo maintains is the opposition of the pure and impure so it was dumo who actually makes this bogle's arguments about about uh, all these features into a kind of more structuralist argument saying that the, the a, a principle which uh, uh, fundamentally you know uh, which which fundamentally determines the nature of hindu caste society is the opposition of the pure and the impure okay they are not only really, of course they are binary but also they are placed in in the uh, highly opposed manner so uh, dumo stresses on the importance of recognizing these three features or principles as mutually entailed resting on one fundamental conception and this one fundamental conception he argues is this opposition of the pure and impure and he argues that all other features including endogamy rules and uh, you know rules uh, ensuring the separation of these groups and the division of labor which necessitates interdependency all these things can be uh, explained or all these things can be reduced to what he calls it as the opposition of the pure and impure okay so if bogle had identified three important set of features uh, dumo argues that everything can be reduced everything can be you know uh, brought down to this whole idea of a opposition of the pure and the impure the opposition underlies hierarchy which is a superiority of the pure to the impure underlies separation because the pure and the impure must be kept separate and underlies the division of labor because pure and impure occupations must must likewise be kept separate the whole is founded on the necessary and hierarchical coexistence of the two opposites so this is say in 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 nutshell this is dumontian theory of caste so he would argue that in a caste system typical uh, hierarchy as we mentioned there are uh, you know all castes are hierarchically arranged and uh it is the according to dumo it is opposition between the pure and impure okay and uh, in this binary 
society and everybody prefers the pure okay so the pure is always kept here and here it is the impure that is kept at the or kept on the bottom so opposition underlies hierarchy which is the superiority of the pure to the impure so you can't keep a uh, caste that practices impure task on the on, on the top because in a hierarchical arrangement pure always uh, precedes that of impure pure is always privileged pure pure is always sought after pure is always important than the impure so hierarchically it is always on the top and underlies the separation because pure and impure must be kept separate it is not only that they are you know they have to be hierarchically arranged but an adequate distance must be ensured okay they must be kept aside kept apart because the pure and impure cannot be allowed to mingle and as you know when pure and impure come to come together it is it, the pure also becomes a impure okay and kept separate and underlies the division of labor because pure and impure occupation must likewise be kept separate so there is a division of labor but this division of labor also must be separated so that the impure occupations continue to be separate from that of the pure occupations okay occupations can be divided as pure and impure uh, for example being a priest or a teacher or a warrior they are all considered to be superior and pure uh, occupation especially uh, being a priest okay a priest is somebody who directly deals with the god at least with the with an idol and uh, which is supposedly uh, at a highest form of ritual purity whereas a person who is dealing with uh, as a human hair or a person who is hu dealing with human excreta or a or a person who is dealing with the with the carcasses of of dead animals all these things are considered to be defiling and impure hence they must be kept aside okay kept separate the whole is founded on the necessary and hierarchical coexistence of the two opposites so this is his fundamental argument the whole of caste system is founded on the necessary and hierarchical coexistence this a uh, hier this hierarchy is necessary because you can't keep the pure and impure together you can't keep the uh, pure occupations and impure occupations together so they have to be uh, they have to be kept uh, separate at the same time they must coexist okay because this is this is how the caste system this, this is how he argues the whole is founded the whole of caste system is founded on the necessary and hierarchical coexistence of the two opposites hierarchy defined as a superiority of the pure over the impure then is the keystone in dumo's model of the caste system the same point that we discussed it is of the greatest importance to realize at once that as employed by him the notion is quite independent of natural inequalities or the distribution of power it is a principle by which the element of a whole are ranked in relation to the whole so he argues that the uh, superiority of the pure over the impure is of the greatest importance to realize at once that as employed by him the notion is quite independent of natural inequalities or the distribution of power so he says that the way in which uh, inequalities are seen in the world or the way in which uh, you know the 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 power whether it is economic or political power is distributed these uh, these ways of way in which power is understood and articulated or natural inequalities they are all very independent of the way in which the pure is understood and identified and distinguished from that of the impure okay and it is a principle by which the element of a whole are ranked in relation to the whole so a particular caste group comes here okay a particular caste group comes here and its position is decided on the basis of overall logic of this 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 whole system okay a particular caste group for example if it is a uh, caste group of a washerman okay it's a caste group of a, of a washerman and this washerman is assigned a particular position in the ritual uh, hierarchy not on the base of power or not on the base of economic power or political power but on the base of how this overall logic of 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 the separation and coexistence between purity and and, and pollution is decided so it is it is washerman is placed here not placed here not placed here or not placed here because there are castes who are superior to washerman there are also castes that are inferior to washerman okay so that is the principle by which the element of a whole are ranked in relation to the whole so the position of a particular caste is dependent on the overall logic of this whole system that is a fundamental uh, argument of dumo 
He sees his task as the construction of a model of the traditional caste system of an ideal type. Uh, he is concerned only secondarily with the ascertaining the fit between it and the contemporary social reality. Now, uh, here we come across this term called as uh, uh, ideal type. Ideal type, um, I hope you remember, is a is a is a methodological construct uh, provided by uh, uh, Max Weber uh, uh, as 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 a way of constructing uh, a kind of a, um, a of a of a conceptual category, which uh, you know fulfills almost all all necessary features attributable to that particular system. Uh, he defines it as a one-sided accentuation of all important elements. There is a, there's a specific definition called that. So, for Dumo is primarily concerned with creating such kind of an ideal type of a caste system. Okay? So, he says that this is the theory. This is how it works. Okay? This is how conceptually it must work. The uh, purity and impurity must be distinguished. Those who represent purity must be prioritized or over the people who represent uh, impurity, they must coexist, as, uh, coexist, however, but their coexistence must be governed by rules and regulations that ensure their separation. Okay? So, coexistence, separation, mutual dependency and then hierarchy, all these things are brought together with, by, within a singular theoretical frame. And he was less uh, concerned with the fit between this theory and the contemporary social reality. And this is a very, very uh, interesting, fascinating point because uh, if you, if we will discuss in detail the kind of criticisms that uh, Dumo had to face. So, quite a lot of criticism, of course, there were criticisms against this very theoretical model, but quite a lot of criticism that Dumo had to face was, uh, it, it emerged from the fact that empirical reality do not really fit in this particular way. We will discuss that in later. But Dumo was not much concerned about it. Okay? Dumo was concerned, but for him, his primary thing is that whether a particular observ observation fits in this theory or not, it is only a secondary matter, whether he was more interested to see whether this particular concept, this particular theoretical constructs is inherently logical and coherent. His method is that of a theorist. He begins with a key idea and then proceeds deductively and dialectically working out its implications step by step. This is what he does. So, he uh, had this very influential important observations of, of Bogle uh, who identified these three important things, but he, uh, but, but Dumo brings in the framework of, uh, uh, you know, um, of, of structuralism and then, uh, you know, arranges that in a more logical order. So, having declared his foremost concern to be with ideology, that is uh, with a system of ideas and values, he hastens to caution that ideology is not everything. So, for, I, for, for what is ideology for Dumo? Ideology for Dumo is this opposition between the pure and impure. Okay? This is the fundamental point that uh, Dumo argues again and again that the fundamental structural element of Hindu religion, Hindu society is the opposition between the pure and impure and the distinction between power and status that we will discuss in a moment. So, uh, he says that this ideology is the fundamental one. Okay? Ideology is a system of ideas and values, but he hastens to caution that ideology is not everything. Ideology will not explain everything, though it encompasses the whole of social reality. Nor does observation of actual behavior reveal everything. There remains a residue, not necessarily of inferior ontological status, which is deduced from a confrontation of ideology with observation. So, he uh, says that as we mentioned in the very, very beginning, uh, he speaks about both uh, the ability to talk from within and from without. So, uh, he maybe just like any other theorist, he would argue that the uh, ideological, the most deeper, deepest structural, uh, you know, arrangement of society must be understood. But along with that, that particular structuralist argument must be buttressed by the kind of an observable uh, field data that you collect from the uh, other places. There remains a residue, uh, which is deduced from a confrontation of ideology with observation. Now, as if we just go back, he reminds caste teaches us a fundamental principle called as hierarchy. Okay, and he, as I mentioned, he is he was addressing that to the French audience who is uh, not familiar with hierarchy, but who is more familiar with the idea of uh, egalitarianism or equality, and aims to understand other values intellectually. Okay, so this is another very important point. He wants the French 
public to understand other values intellectually and only then you will be able to uh, appreciate your own value orientations. Uh, he critiques the tendency of viewing caste system just as yet another system of social strat stratification which this point we already covered. Basic aim is to understand the ideology of caste system, the, the way in which its uh, structural basis function. Now, uh, he is critical of the tendency to view human beings as atomized individuals, as monads and ask for a sociological apperception. So, this is again going back to uh, his fundamental argument that societies between uh, societies in India and societies in uh, Europe uh, are very, very different. So, he is critical of the tendency to human uh, to view human beings as atomized individuals, as monads and ask for a sociological apperception. So, I uh, hope um, another person that comes to your mind who uh, you know put forward this argument is Emil Durkheim. So, Durkheim argued that uh, individuals, society is composed of individuals, okay, it, it's, it's a uh, you know common known fact, but when society constitutes itself, it is much more than the sum total of all these individuals, okay, what he calls it as social facts, which again we know that. So, uh, Dumo almost follows that argument and is very critical of the tendency to look at a society as merely composed of uh, individuals okay, who are free agents, who have uh, you know their own autonomy and, and then sovereignty. Rather, he argued that you need to develop methodology to understand how society itself has its own existence which is much more and much beyond than that of the collective existence of these individuals. The distinction between the traditional society and modern society where the collectivity and individualism respectively are important features. So, uh, Dumont argued that there are these two societies, the French society and the Indian society are inherently different. Okay, They are inherently different because the traditional societies are, are, are where the collectivity assumes more importance and modern societies are where the individualisms, individualism assumes difference. Uh, sorry, uh, assumes uh, significance. And uh, so, uh, that is the reason why he is uh, criticizing the Western scholars for being uh, preoccupied with the, uh, with, with the Eurocentric or, or, or ethnocentric understanding of individuals. India being a traditional society is marked by the ideology of hierarchy. So, so that is his uh, fundamental argument. Now, coming to the third chapter, uh, from system to structure, the pure and the impure. This is a, a point that we just mentioned, but we are going back to that same uh, uh, topic. The whole should not be seen by starting from the notion of the element, but by starting from the notion of system in terms of which certain fixed principles govern the arrangement of fluid and fluctuating elements. He is critical of the empirical ways of understanding system, rather the system needs to be understood based on its ideology. Say, similar point, I am just putting it in different forms. So, I um, hope you remember the previous way in which we try to uh, make sense of this whole idea of social system okay, uh, within uh, structural functionalism, which gave uh, preference to these ideas of different subsystems or its elements. Okay. And, and, and uh, that was the way in which structural functionalism understood a society. Okay, they were more concerned about how a particular subsystem of society, it contributes for the overall uh, uh, you know, well-being of society. Now, the whole should not be seen by starting from the notion of the element. That is, you should not, you cannot uh, you know, look at a society, understand society by trying to understand what this particular element stands for or what is the nature of this particular element. Okay? But by starting from the notion of a system, in terms of which certain fixed principle govern the arrangement of fluid and fluctuating elements. So, uh, this is a fundamental uh, you know, argument of structuralism that as a researcher, you must pay attention to these relations okay, that govern the relation between this particular unit and this particular unit, this unit and this unit. Okay, because this might go, this particular element might change uh, its character, it might become something else, it might die, something else might come in, but these relations according to Dumo will remain same. Okay, so the, the terms of which the certain fixed principles govern arrangement of fluid and fluctuating elements. He is critical of the empirical ways of understanding system, rather the system needs to be understood based on its ideology. And uh, this is uh, the point that uh, I was mentioning, he is <coughs> almost... Uh, critical of the, the whole body of 
uh, anthropological knowledge that uh, hitherto existed then. Uh, he was almost kind of dismissive of uh, people like uh, Srinivas or others who only uh, you know dependent or only made use of the empirical method. And according to Dimo, empirical method only provides you with very superficial uh, observable things and, and you will be collecting and you will be trying to make some kind of statement about it without understanding what is the salience of this observable data. Now, distinction between systems and structure, the structural functionalism and structural is the same point that we mentioned. So, here if uh, structural functionalism give preference to systems trying to understand how different uh, you know units are organized in a particular way and how independent parts uh, provide uh, for a particular uh, arrangement. In structuralism, emphasis is on this particular arrangement, this relations, not on the systems. The caste system needs to be understood on the basis of the principles whereby castes are ranked in order and underlying this order is found a system of opposition structure that we already discussed. And now, structure is a system of relations, not a system of elements. Okay. Now, uh, if you just go back to this, structure is a system of relations. So, for him, for Dumo or for any uh, you know structuralist, the fundamental way in which a society is uh, defined is based on the way in which these relations are, are, are to be understood. Okay? These individual units, what you see is they are dispensable, they can change their color, they can change, they can be replaced, but their relations will remain almost static. So, that is a very uh, important argument. Structure is a system of relations, not a system of elements. So, they are based on the principle of the opposition of the pure and the impure and underlies the principle of hierarchy. So, the whole is founded upon the necessary and hierarchical coexistence of the two opposites, the, the same point that we discussed. Hierarchy is the principle by which the elements of a whole are ranked in relation to the whole, the same point that we discussed. So, in a, in a hierarchical arrangement, uh, a particular position of a caste must be understood on the basis of why that it, what is the overall logic of a of a system and why it, it came to be positioned here. This fundamental opposition is not the cause of caste distinction, but it is their form. This is another uh, you know important argument that Dumo puts forward. He argues that um, this particular arrangement is not the cause. Okay, it's not that somebody uh, decided to put the pure on the top and impure in the in the bottom and then uh, arranged everybody in between. It is not. Okay, he he does not say how caste came into existence, but he says that caste system began to to express itself. Okay, or it began to take the form of this hierarchical arrangement. Now, Dumont tries to fit in ethnographic data uh, to this theoretical framework and as we mentioned earlier, uh, he only uh, succeeds partially because there are a lot of uh, historical uh, or, or anthropological data that does not simply fit in. The impurity of the untouchable is conceptually inseparable from the purity of Brahmin and untouchability will not truly disappear under the purity until the purity of the Brahmin is itself radically devalued. And now this is another very, very important argument. It's a very uh, provocative argument, very radical argument. Um, if if you read it again, he says that this, you know, uh, when, when you look into the extremes, okay, Brahmins are considered to be the most pure and untouchables are considered to be the most impure, okay, because they deal with very different kinds of uh, occupations. Uh, untouchables deal with the most defiling occupations like uh, you know scavenging or uh, removing dead bodies uh, of animals and human beings or working on leather and 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 uh, you know uh, cleaning the drainage and and such kind of defiling polluting jobs whereas the brahmins are supposed to be uh, uh, different so here he says that the untouchability the notion of untouchability will not disappear okay until the purity associated with the brahmin is conceptually uh, itself is radically devalued it's a very, very provocative. Just imagine the uh, the practical implications of this argument. Okay, we all talk about the uh, you know uh, eradication of untouchability, eradication of uh, caste prejudices. So there are legal initiatives. There are uh, you know arguments to 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 end caste discrimination against the untouchables. There are lot of legal initiatives. But Dumo says that the notion of uh, untouchability, the notion of impurity associated with uh, untouchables, will is here to stay if the notions of purity associated with Brahmins also stay because they are constitutive of each other. 
okay one does not have its own salience in the absence of others it's it's a very important uh, argument now uh, this is something very important because uh, uh, a, a host of other scholars also have argued that um, you know um, this 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 uh, purity and impurity are seen as quite opposite occupying extremely opposite opposite positions and then both are required for the reinforcement of others okay we will come back to this particular point so let me uh, break now and we will continue with the discussion uh, and we will conclude this session on dumo in the next class thank you